So India, this last week, has been the toughest time yet. We're going to explain why it's been so tough right now. But going back to the start, right at the very start, the last time you saw us was in Kanyakumari, which is the most southerly tip of India. From that point, we had such a good time there. It was Pongal Festival in Tamil Nadu. From there, we decided to drive just two hours north in the rickshaw to a place called Trivandrum, which is the capital city of the new state of Kerala. Uh, very excited to be heading into Kerala. As everybody knows, it's very, very tropical, very beautiful, lovely beaches. So it's really nice to get a start on it and head there. On the route, the two hour route towards there, it took a little bit longer than what we thought it would do because the engine started playing up on us for the very, almost the first time since having this in a month, we are having engine problems with the rickshaw. Uh, it, what happened was when I was pulling up, when we were slowing down in traffic, and Kerala, believe it or not, has got traffic lights. We were very shocked to see them. <laughs> this is India. When we were slowing down to traffic, the engine would cut out and then would be a real pain in the ass to start up again. So what we did was we drove to a cheap guest house, went to this cheap guest house and thought nothing of it. We just thought maybe we've got the oil mix wrong. Maybe that's what it was. So we thought if the oil mix is wrong, it's probably because the oil mix is too strong, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Better to be too strong than too weak. So we stayed the night at this guest house. We decided after one month of traveling in this rickshaw to book into an ashram. As you know, this rickshaw is a lot smaller than, than I am. So I'm crouching it quite a lot. It's a rickshaw, so it's not the most comfortable of journeys. So we thought that a bit of yoga might be a really, really good thing to do at this juncture for both of us. An ashram, I don't know if you know it, is more sort of, more like a monastery than it is a yoga retreat. So it's very strict. You are abiding by certain rules. There's a schedule, there's curfews. We'll get into that later on. We woke up the next day, the morning of going to the ashram in this cheap guest house in Trivandrum, the capital city of, city of Kerala, and went to go and start up the engine and it wouldn't start. Worst news possible, we even picked up a hitchhiker along the way. There was someone at the guest house who's also going to the ashram. So we said, don't worry, we'll take you. So I think we did two things that you never should never do in India. One, make plans. Two, get a hitchhiker. Because both those things went to pot. As it wouldn't start, obviously I went into the, the engines in the back of the rickshaw. So I opened up the, uh, the back door, looked at the engine and lo and behold, the carburetor was hanging off, <laughs> literally hanging off. As soon as I said to Janine, the carburetor's hanging off, God knows how we got, we made it that far with a carburetor hanging off. Literally, at that moment, a rickshaw driver, so a taxi driver who drives these in taxis, pulled up right next to us, came over and had a look. Without a second thought, he started uh, almost sort of trying to repair it, but knowing that this was a carburetor hanging off and it needs a mechanic, um, I assumed that he was trying to bodge it so that we could get to a mechanic and that's exactly what he was doing. So this, this man na man's name was Shiva. He was very, very good. He, he showed me all different parts of it. We were tightening things up. Um, a lot of stuff had fallen off and we've lost now that was holding the carburetor in place. Uh, but what he managed to do was fashion some sort of a, a rope out of some rubber hanging on the, off the side of the road, enough to tie the carburetor on until we got to a garage. And I thought that this auto rickshaw garage would be able to fix it from that point onwards. So then from there, uh, we got rid of the hitchhiker, which we were very sorry about, but you know, we didn't want to hold this person up uh, anymore. And so I convoyed with Shiva, the taxi driver, uh, to the auto rickshaw garage. At this stage, th that drive from the guest house to the auto rickshaw garage was one of the scariest drives I've had in this rickshaw so far. It was so, so, so scary because he's a taxi driver. So he was going all over the shop. The traffic in Trivandrum is really crazy, as crazy as the biggest city we've been in so far, which is Chennai. So the whole thing was just really, really scary. And of course, with the carburetor hanging off or bodged, shall we say, it was even more scary. Anyway, after um, a little while, we ended up at the auto rickshaw place. Um, we did come up at one point where we were crossing some railway lines, and I was thinking if this thing cuts out like it has done all the time, we're in serious trouble. Thankfully, we made it across. <laughs> we got to the auto rickshaw garage and the mechanics, after the uh, initial amusement at seeing the most colorful rickshaw in India turn up at the, at the rickshaw garage, um, we. Uh, Shiva acted as a translator for us because in Kerala they speak the language of Malayam. Um, so he spoke Malayam to the guys. He was, without Shiva being there, it would have been a lot more difficult. Um, so they then started looking at the carburetor. They didn't, they looked at the carburetor 
and then look straight at the, uh, the spark plug. The actual problem with the, uh, with the engine was that the spark plug wasn't working. So after a lot of to in and froing, actually it took a lot of time. He was, the, the mechanic was working on it for probably about an hour, um, trying to work out what the, cleaning the spark plug, changing the spark plug, getting a new adapter, changing that for another adapter, getting, another, getting the old spark plug back. Anyway, a lot of to in and froing. Um, he, de he deemed it okay, and then he took us on the test drive. The test drive with the mechanic driving Pete our rickshaw was the second most scariest drive that I've had in this rickshaw so far. Test drive done, take it back, and a, bit, a little bit more tinkering, and it's all good. We drive off. The whole lot cost us 200 rupees with that mechanic. One hour mechanic and a new spark plug cost 200 rupees. That's two pounds. I don't understand why it was so cheap, but anyway, he didn't fix the carburetor. The carburetor is still bodged on. He thought, it's okay for now. <laughs> so Shiva, the taxi driver who stopped and helped us, he helped us uh, bodge it, get us, he, which got us to the garage. We went on a convoy with him and then uh, he acted as the translator at the garage, made the whole thing so smooth. He was so wonderful. Um, had been with us for two and a half hours. And so I thought that's two and a half hours he's not been able to get any taxi rides. So I paid him. I gave him enough, enough money for a full day's uh, uh, taxi rides um, for, for the time he spent with us. I was more than happy to do that. Uh, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't accept it. He wouldn't accept a penny off us. That is just the just Indian people for you. We're just, that's that's the who we've come across so far. Just and I, I get every morning from this stage, I get a, a WhatsApp. I haven't told you this, have I? I get a WhatsApp message off him every morning saying good morning, uh, good things happen to good people. Oh, they're so nice. That's anyway, Shiva. If you're watching this, thank you so much. You're a very very kind man. Anyway, that's not even the tough part. That was just trying to get to the ashram. From that point onwards, it was leaving the coast, pretty much, and heading into the jungle. This ashram is called Shivananda uh, Vedanta Ashram, and it's right in the jungle in Kerala. Um, so we headed in there, we had almost no problems with the engine getting there. Um, it was twisty and turny, it was lovely actually. And then we arrived at the ashram. On arriving at the ashram, there's these big stone steps and these big gates to get in, that you have to ring a number to try and get in. So it's a little bit like a, uh, a beautiful looking fortress. I climbed the steps and there was a security guard through the doors and he brought all our luggage in and he told us that once we're in, we're not allowed to leave again. We brought all our luggage up and I managed to park the, park the uh, rickshaw nearby and we were in and that was it. Doors locked, done. The next time that we would be allowed out was a few days after, four days after this. An ashram is basically like a, a place where people go to do yoga. But yoga's obviously not just stretching, it's meditating and chanting and all the rest of it. And whilst we're not saying, we don't deny all of that sort of stuff, we're there to have some sort of discipline for us because we have been working so hard on YouTube for the last two years and van life and all the rest of it that we've not really had like a proper, proper break. So what we wanted was a rigorous schedule that was gonna slap us in the face and uh, give us the break that we needed. And we're in India, of course. And also, this is the reality of India. Many, many people who come to India come for this, this sort of experience. And because this is a English-speaking ashram, it, it attracts obviously English-speaking Indian people, but also people from all over the world. So everyone comes here to have a very strict form of yoga taught to them. And we thought, what better experience than to come here and do that? It was a little bit marred by the fact that being told that we can't leave again, Two people who hold freedom higher than any currency whatsoever, being told that we can't leave was, wasn't nice. So when we arrived, we were a little bit sort of um, disheartened by that. We checked in 
anyway, it was a really long check-in process and we were shown to our rooms. We knew it'd be basic, it's an ashram, but also very unclear about what was gonna be happening for the whole time that we'd be here because we wanted to stay for a week. We're locked in anyway, so we've got to stay for a week. Later that evening, we had some food. The food was quite nice, quite basic, in a dinner hall and you sit in silence having food or they tell you to sit in silence having food. In fact, a lot of ashram life is in silence. And uh, later that evening, we would learn the schedule and the, the, the schedule for the ashram is the thing that makes it very, very, very tough. I've got the schedule here. So this whole schedule for the ashram that we have to abide by. We were always a bit, yesterday we woke up and we was a bit sort of jaded by the fact that we're not allowed to leave for a few days. Like literally locked in this ashram. As beautiful as the ashram is, but we've woken up today and realized it's beautiful here. Like all you can hear is jungle sounds outside. So it's, it's, well, it's all right. We're gonna surrender ourselves to this ashram and everything that it has to offer. As rigorous as the schedule is. Here we go anyway, 5.20 wake up call. We've had that. Wake up bell, sorry. Six o'clock is satsang in the Shiva hall, which is where we're going now. 7.30 is, is uh, some sort of herbal tea. Eight o'clock is a, uh, the first yoga class. It's called a yoga asana, which means asanas are the poses. So it's like what you know as yoga, stretching and stuff, that's what it means. So eight o'clock, we've got two hours of yoga before breakfast, which they're calling brunch at 10 o'clock. And then there's a meeting, and then you can either have meditation coaching or a yoga coaching throughout the middle of the day. And then at 1.30, there's tea and snacks. At two o'clock, there's a lecture. At 3.30, there's more, another yoga class that goes on for quite quite a long time, actually. That's quite a long one. Um, but it's more gentle. I don't know, I don't know what that means, whether this morning one's gonna be pretty tough. Then six o'clock there's dinner, and then six thirty, there's another, there's temple chanting. Eight o'clock, there's satsang again. Now and then it's after that it's silence and bed. Well, you can imagine what we were like after a whole day of that. <laughs> Janine, pretty much, I, I could see it's written all over her face and the things that she was saying was, was in, inching more towards leaving than staying after the first full day. Um, and I took, not, I didn't have to convince her, but you know, I was sort of saying to her, this is, this is the break that we need. If she didn't, Janine spends all of her time editing the YouTube videos. We do a lot of filming and a lot of editing. And even though she, it's her passion in life, editing the videos, um, she need, we need a break. We've had two years of doing this, this YouTube thing and uh, we need the break. And so I said to her, that, and you know, we don't live with our parents. We've not lived with our parents for, uh, you know, 15 years or something like that. We don't have anyone around to tell us. We don't have bosses or anything like that. So we'd sort of needed, I felt like we needed some something very strict to sort of help us take a break um, and for us to grow a little bit and to challenge ourselves and we're out to India to challenge ourselves and to grow as you know and have an adventure and have an experience this 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 place was going to be very very high up on the whole amount of experiences we're going to be having it's very very intense so I sort of said to Janine just surrender yourself to it it'll be all right and wake up tomorrow and see how you feel anyway woke up tomorrow the next day <laughs> the next day five o'clock in the morning ding 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 and Janine um, and myself as well, we're aching quite a bit. Rock hard beds, paper thin pillows. And off we go again, chanting. Hour and a half, yoga class, two hours. Food, yoga class, one hour. Lecture, yoga class, two hours. Chanting, karma yoga. I think the thing is, the second day, the second full day we have, which is pretty much the third day, we were um, so tired from and aching from all of the yoga that we didn't really have time to think, do I want to stay or do I want to leave? We just went to bed. Um, I, used to, I actually ran to bed from that chanting in the evening. I was so tired. I thought I was, I thought I was going to be ill if I wasn't, if I didn't get in bed soon. So I sort of, uh, we ran to bed and we slept for from like 9:30 till five the next day. So good, good amount of time. The reason why I'm saying to this, we've got a few, a couple of days in now, two or three days in, and just wanted to show you the truth of what it's like in these ashrams. You know, it's not easy. It's very, very tough. We wanted to stay for a whole week. We're only three days in and we're struggling. Um, and it is tough, um, but 
something happened. Something very, very interesting happened after that, uh, th those first three, four days. We woke up in the morning and we, we started getting used to it a little bit. Some beautiful, wonderful people were at this ashram from all walks of life, from all different age groups. There wasn't just young people, there were like all the way up to like, I think there was a 70 year old there. Really amazing. Oh, and there were some really old babas there, you know, who were actually, you know, traveling yogis who'd wander around India, you know, staying at the ashram because it's an ashram and they can stay. We woke up on that the day after that and we actually looked forward to going to the morning chanting and meditation thing and looked forward, bizarrely, to the first yoga class, whereas the day before, dreaded it a little bit because we were aching so much. So we was getting a little bit sort of mentally, physically, and I would assume spiritually, but given the fact that we were looking forward to the, the, the chanting, stronger, and, and those lectures that we were having, we were having an hour lecture per day about what was happening through it. There was, there was lectures throughout the day, lots of teachings about the reason why you're doing certain things and the science behind it. There was science that was behind everything absolutely everything you know tens of thousands of years old, years old science it's really interesting and you start enjoying it honestly I, we started enjoying it we started getting good at yoga in such a short amount of time the poses become a lot more easier what was difficult to start was becoming something that we could actually do and you because you could do it you look forward to doing it and we actually said to each other further on in the day i feel pretty damn good i remember saying janine clocked me and i clocked me and we said we were both thinking the same thing and I said, it's Jean, I'm feeling really, really good. And she said, I was going to say the exact same thing to you. Like really, really, really feeling it. I don't know what it is. I know now the whole thing's constructed in a certain way so that you are physically, mentally and spiritually healthy uh, and whole. And everyone walking around the ashram is feeling the same thing. There's a few people dropping out at the start. You see people going home and they're, they're leaving messages and saying, I'm leaving because it's so difficult or the food's so bland or whatever. But the rest of us who are sticking it out, if you get past that initial hurdle, start enjoying it the next morning they didn't do the satsang they decided to have the satsang which is the chanting by a lake a nearby lake which was absolutely beautiful so it was a silent meditation walk towards this lake and then arrived there and there was this chanting the chanting is like singing a bit like Hare Krishna style singing all the God's names and then a silent walk back and it was just so beautiful like the place we were in was so beautiful all you could hear is jungle noises exceptional honestly and I think all of these things have a, a way of changing you and everyone's on a journey together so you're meeting new people and reflecting on what's happening and we're getting a proper break you know I've we've not posted on social media for ages and um, we've really really taken it in and taken it you know by the by by the horns Anyway, skip forward to today, and we've just left the ashram after one week. We completed one week at the ashram, the one that we were gonna be leaving on the very after the very first full day because it was so bloody difficult and because they trapped us inside and they took away our freedom. There's a reason behind everything. There's a reason why our freedom was taken away from us. As someone quite rightly pointed out who was staying there for quite a while and had been staying there for quite a while, what do you need outside of the gates of here for the next week? And I was like, nothing. We just surrendered ourselves to it and I'm so glad that we did. I'm so glad that we stuck it out because we've walked out there with, honestly, you can go on holiday and you can have a few beers on the beach and, and all the rest of it. Um, you can go on a yoga retreat, have a few beers on the beach and do a few you know do a few yoga classes and you can go back to England and go well I had a nice time nice memories saw some sunsets you know did a bit of yoga on the beach and, and what have you and it's good and everything and memories are so important they're so much more more important than collecting than possessions I really understand that but when you can have memories as well as changing yourself for the better in that process then it's so much more worthwhile even though it feel feels like a military camp at the start you know, why is there so many rules? Why are they asking us to be silent all the time? Um, but it's a process, and they know that when you come out of that process, on the, out the other end, you're gonna, be a, you're gonna feel better, mentally, physically, and spiritually. And for that reason, I would, you know, I would say to you, and I'm so glad that we made this video to show you guys, it's totally different to what the videos we've been doing recently, and I, and I apologize for that if you're after some, we're back on the road again next week, next video is, we're back on the road again. But we just wanted to show you the reality of what it's like in these ashrams, and an honest perspective of it from two people who are not religious or anything like that. We weren't really yogis before going in there, did a yoga class here and there, but now, 
feel like a proper yogi, you know? Done doing five hours of yoga every day, living full days in Nashram for a week, uh, set ourselves up with a practice that we hopefully are gonna continue and just feel bloody brilliant. Lost a bit of weight, just feel like, just feel good. Just feel really good. Janine feels the same as well. She's over there chatting to, chatting to some local by this beautiful lake next to the ashram. And I'll leave all of the links to the information to this place if you wanna go in the description um, and you can have a look at it yourself. I really do recommend it. Happy to answer any questions about it as well in comments if you want to. And if you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe. The subscribe button is uh, down there somewhere. And we'll see you next time because we are going back in our rickshaw, the one where the carburetor is tied on at the moment and we're hitting the road and we're heading north through the state of Kerala. In fact, we're gonna experience Kerala for the very first time and see what it's like in the communist state of India. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life.